today I'll be presenting Math Kangaroo 2017 levels 7 and 8. Problem 1. What is the time 17 hours after 5 o'clock p.m.? Well, we can see that if we add 5 and 17, then we get 22. And then 22 divided by 12, you have a remainder of 10. Therefore, you know our answer is 10, 10 o'clock a.m. or B. Problem number two. A group of girls stands in a circle. Xena is four to the left and Yana from Yana and the seventh to the right from Yana. How many girls are in the group? Well, in this diagram, I have shown the girls as, X, as each of these individual X's. And if, if we see, we see that from Xena, we have one, two, three, four. And then from, Zena, uh, from the other way, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So both of these are met. So now we just need to count how many X's are in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Therefore, our answer is C, eleven. Problem three. What number must be subtracted from negative seventeen to obtain negative thirty-three? A, negative fifty. B, negative sixteen. C, sixteen. D, forty. Or E, fifty. So. We're going to write a simple equation for this by saying negative 17 minus x equals negative 33. Now, if we add 17 on both sides, then we get negative x equals negative 16. So x equals 16. Therefore, our answer is C, 16. Problem 4. The diagram shows a striped isosceles triangle and its altitude. Each stripe has the same height. What fraction of the area of the triangle is white? So, if you look at the diagram, that if you look at the diagram, we can see that each of these reflects. So, if we just flip them over onto one side, we get a triangle that is half shaded and half not. Therefore, our answer is A, one half. Problem five. Which of the following equalities is correct? A. 4 over 1 equals 1.4. B. 5 over 2 equals 2.5. C. 6 over 3 equals 3.6. D. 7 over 4 equals 4.7. Or E. 8 over 5 equals 5.8. So we first look at A and we see that 4 over 1 equals 4, not 1.4. So obviously A cannot be the answer. So we look at B. B. B can be the answer because if we look at it 5 over 2, if you divide 5 by 2, then we get 2 and 1 half. And 1 half equals 0 0.5. So B could be our answer. But just to make sure that there are these, uh, but just to make sure, we're gonna check all the, the the rest of the three to make sure they're not answers either. So six over three equals two, not three point six. Seven over four equals one and three fourths, not four point seven. And eight over five equals one and three fifths, not not. 5.8. Therefore, our answer is B. Problem 6. The diagram shows two rectangles whose sides are parallel. What is the difference in the lengths of the perimeters of the two rectangles? A. 12, B. 16, C. 20, D. 21, or E. 24. So, you, we can see that I drew the diagram that's on the paper, and we can see that they have marked each of these margins with a number. And they're asking, they are asking what is the difference in the length of the perimeters. Well, we can just add these up. If we look, we can add 3 plus 4, which equals 7, 
and then we can add 2 plus 3, which equals 5. And then 7 plus 5, which equals 12. And we multiply 12 by 2, and we get 24. Therefore, our answer is E, 24. Problem 7. Bob folded a piece of paper twice and then cut one hole in the folded piece of paper. When he unfolded the paper, he saw the arrangement shown in the diagram. How did Bob fold this piece of paper? A, B, C, D, or E. So we can look at A and we see that even if he did it this way, however, however he punched the hole, it, all of them, each one of these would have a hole in it. But each one does not have a hole in it because these two, these two would only have a hole in it. Therefore, A cannot be the answer. So we look at B. For B, even if he folds it like this, if he puts a, a, a hole right here, then the hole will be reflected like this, not like this. Therefore, we know that B is not the answer. <clears throat> so we look at C. C is not the answer because even if you folded it like this and punched it like this, it would reflect off of all of these and each one of them would have two. But we only have, each one of these quadrants would have Two, two holes, but we see that this one only has two in total. So then we look at D. For D, D makes sense because if we fold it, then we get this pattern. We have a pattern like this. And if we punch a hole right here, then when we unravel it, then we will have a piece of paper that looks like this. But just to make sure, we're going to check E. For E, E does also, also doesn't make sense. Because if you punch two holes like this, then you would see them reflected like this over and over. But we don't see them reflected. Therefore, our, we see that our, our answer is D. Problem 8. The sum of three positive integers is 7. What is the product of these three integers? <clears throat> so, this is pretty much a guess and check problem. So, if we see 7, we can start off with 1, let's say 2, and 4. We see that these are all different, right? But then we have, we, yeah, so we see that these are all different. So, and then if we multiply these together, then we have 2 times 4, which equals 8. Therefore, our answer is 8, D. Problem 9. The diagram shows four overlapping hearts. The areas of these hearts are 1 centimeter squared, 4 centimeters squared, 9 centimeters squared, and 16 centimeters squared. What is the shaded area? So we can see that the, the shaded area is described in this diagram. So we can see that this one is probably 1, this, is, this heart is 4, this heart is 9, and this heart is 16. So what we do is we do 4 minus 1 and 16 minus 9. 16 minus 9 <clears throat> equals 7 and 4 minus 1 equals 3. So we add 3 plus 7 and we get 10. Therefore, our answer is B, 10 centimeters squared. Problem 10. Yvonne has 20 euros. Each of her four sisters has 10 euros. How many euros does Yvonne have to give to each of her sisters so that each of the five girls has the same amount of money? So, we can just add 20, 20 plus 40, and this 40 comes from the four sisters and 10 euros, and we get 60. Then we divide 60 by 5, and we get 12. And then we do 12 minus 10, because each of the sisters has 10 euros, and we get 2. Therefore, our answer is A, 2. Problem 11. Annie the ant started at the left end of a pole and crawled two-thirds of its length. Bob the beetle started at the right end of the same pole and crawled three-fourths of the length. What fraction of the length of the pole are Annie and Bob now apart? Well, we see that we know that this is two thirds, this is one third, this is one fourth, and this is three fourths. So what we can do is we can do two over three minus one fourth, and then 
What we get from that is 8 over 12 minus 3 over 12. And then we get 5 over 12. Therefore, our answer is E. 5 over 12. Problem 13. In the diagram, the dashed line and black path form seven equilateral triangles. The length of the dashed line is 20. What is the length of the black path? Well, since we know that these are all equilateral triangles, then we can pretty much, we can say that this, this dark line should be double of what this line is. And it says that the length of the dashed line is 20. So 20, 20 times 2 equals 40. Therefore, we know that our answer is D, 40. Problem 14. Four cousins, Emma, Eva, Rita, and Zena, are 3, 8, 12, and 14 years old, although not necessarily in that order. Emma is younger than Rita. The sum of the ages of Zena and Emma are both div are, is divisible by 5. The sum of the ages of Zena and Rita is also divisible by 5. How old is Eva? So we we see we see that we need to find out z because z is constant in both of these. So if we find out z, then we can protect. Then it it should correspond with e and r. So if we look at it, if z equals twelve and e and r either e equals either three or eight and r equals the leftover number, then that actually works. So now we know that twelve. 8 and 3 are taken, so Eva can only be 14 years old. Therefore, our answer is A, 14. Problem 15. This year, there were more than 800 runners participating in the kangaroo hop. Exactly 35% of the total runners were women, and there were 252 more men than women. How many runners there were there in total? So, if we look at this, if we pretend that the men are 35, then we know that th this 30% gap between them equals 252. Now, if we multiply 252 by 3, then we get 756. But then we still need to fill in that 10% left. So we divide 150, 252 by 3, and then we get 84. So then we add 84 to this, and then we get 840. Therefore, our answer is E, 840. Rhea wants to write a number in each box of the diagram below. She has already written two of the numbers. She wants to write all of the numbers she wants the sum of all the numbers to be equal to 35, the sum of all the, the numbers of the first three boxes to equal 22, and the sum of the numbers of the last three boxes to equal 25. What is the product of the numbers she writes in the gray boxes? Well, we, if we look at this, then we, we'll just call each one of these, since we don't know these, and we know that this is 3 and this is 4, then we'll just call these x, y and z so for x y and z we know that x x plus y plus z equals 28 this is because we know that our sum is 35 and if we subtract 7 from that we get 28 and then we know that y plus z equals 21 and that x plus y equals 19 so now we just need to solve for x, y, and z. But we're mainly looking for x and z since they're the shady ones. So if we look at this, we can immediately see that we can easily subtract numbers from here. So what we can do is we subtract this and then we get x equals to 7. And then if we subtract this, from here, we get z equals to 9. Now, we don't really need to solve for y because y we don't need y. So, we're, we're not going to solve for y. So, we just do 7 times 9, 
which equals which equals 63. Therefore, we know our answer is A, 63. Problem 17. Simon wants to cut a piece of bread into nine pieces of the same length and marks his cutting point or marks his cutting points. Barbara wants to cut the same piece of thread only into eight pieces of the same length and also marks the cutting points. Carl then cuts the thread at all the cutting points that are marked. How many pieces of thread does Carl obtain? So, let's say we have this thread, okay? If we want to cut it into nine pieces and then into eight pieces, so first we have to cut it into nine pieces. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. Now we need to cut it into eight pieces. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now if you look, we look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces. Therefore, our answer is B. 16. Problem 18. Two segments, each one centimeter long, are marked on opposite sides of a square with the side length of 8 centimeters. The ends of the segments are joined as shown in the diagram. What is the shaded area in centimeter square? So, if we look at this, we can see that this one of the lines is a relatively straight line and the other one is a crooked line. And if we take that, we, we know that this is 8 centimeters, so that if you go halfway, then that's 4 centimeters. So then we do, we can just flip this part over here, so then we have this as 2 centimeters, and then we multiply 2 by 4 and divide that by 2, and we get 4. Therefore, our answer is B, 4. Problem 19. Tycho wants to prepare a schedule for his jogging. He wants to jog exactly twice a week and on the same days every week. He never wants to jog on two consecutive days. How many different schedules can he prepare? So we have to map out what Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are. So on Monday, we have four. We get four because we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And it's four because you, we haven't charted out any of these yet. So this is four. So we have four plus something. This one is also four because T isn't used in M and none of these have been charted yet. So we have another four. Then it just goes in sequential order. Three, two, one, zero, zero. So we have four plus four plus three plus two plus four. 1. And if we solve that out, we get 14. Therefore, our answer is B, 14. Problem number 20. Emily wants to write a number into each cell of a 3x3 three three table so that the sum of the numbers in any two cells that share an edge is, are the same. She has already written two numbers as shown in the diagram. What is the sum of all the numbers in the table? Well, we see that she's written 2 and 3, and we know that since they are, all of them have to be adjacent, then we have to follow this, these two numbers, 2 and 3. So, we just follow this rule. 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2. And then it asks for the sum. So, we just, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, we have 10 plus this is four threes, so that's 12. So 10 plus 12 equals 22. Therefore, our answer is D, 22. Problem 21. The numbers of degrees of the angles in a triangle are three different integers. What is the minimum possible sum of its smallest and largest angles? So if we look at it, we know that it, a, a triangle's degrees have to add up to 180. Half of 180 is 90. So we're going to make the largest 90, which means the least can be 1. Because then we have eight, 189 and 90. And then if we add 90 and 1, then we get 91. 
Therefore, our answer is C, 91. Problem 22. Ten kangaroos stood in a line as shown in a diagram. At some point, two kangaroos standing side by side and facing each other exchanged places by jumping past each other. This was repeated until no further jumps were possible. How many exchanges were made? So, if we look at this, we start off over here. We have one, two. So that's three times two, which equals six. Then we have these three moves, since these three are behind them. One, two. So that's so that's six plus six. But then these two are now over here. These two are now over here. So then these three can go over them, and then that's plus another six. So then if we add those all up, we get 18. Therefore, our answer is C, 18. Problem 23. Diane has nine numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Not, and nine. She adds two of them, two to some of them, and five to all the others. What is the smallest number of different results she can obtain? Well, we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is a, this is how it actually works. We add five to this. We add five to this. We add five to this. We add two, two, and two. Then what we get is we get eight. So this is eight. This is eight. This is nine. This is, this is nine. This is nine. And this is 10 and this is 10. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Therefore our answer is B, six. Problem 24. Buses leave the airport every three minutes to drive to the city center. A car leaves the airport at the same time as one of the buses and drives to the city center by the same route. It takes each bus 60 minutes and the car 35 minutes to drive from the airport to the city center. How many buses does the car pass along the way to the center, not including the bus it left with? So, if we look at this, we can draw a timeline or, or a distance of this. And then we can see, we can say this is the bus. We we'll call the bus B and the car is C. So this is the car. In 35 minutes, we see that the car is already over here, but the bus is only here with 25 with 25 minutes still remaining. So the car can take it. The car has the advantage over this. So then we can have 25 over three since each bus each bus is three minutes apart. Therefore. If we do th 25 divided by 3, the closest to there is 24. And, the, and 24 divided by 3 equals 8. Therefore, our answer is A. 8. Problem number 25. Oslea's tablecloth has a regular pattern as shown in the diagram. What percentage of the tablecloth is black? Well, if we look over here, we 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 can we'll just say that these two sides are ten, these two sides are ten, and then from from when we get do that, then we know that this is two. So if we know that this is two, we can just kind of combine all of these. And since this it makes up half of this, and we know that this is two, then if we make up this full thing, then we know we have four as the area of that square. So then first. So first, we get all these numbers, and we, we try and pick out pick them out. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <clears throat> so we have 16. <clears throat> and the reason why I counted these is if you look, each of them has their each own individual each own individual parts, and if we join two of them together, then it makes a fully shaded square. And that's what we want to get. So, in order to get a fully shaded square, then we have 16, we divide it by 2, we get 8. So now we know this is 2 by 2, so that the area is 4 centimeters square. So, 
we get 4 and 8, we multiply 4 times 8, and then we get 32. Therefore, our answer is, our answer is D, 32. Problem 26. Each digit in the sequence starting with 2, 3, 6, 8, and 8 is obtained the following way. The first two digits are 2 and 3, and afterwards each digit is the last digit is the last digit of the product of the two preceding digits in the sequence. What is the two, 2017th digit in the sequence? Well, we can simply just write out the sequence first. So we know that we have two, three, six, eight, and eight. And then we can just go on from here. Eight times eight, we get, we get four as the unit digit, and then we have four, and then, and then we have two, eight, six, eight, eight, four. So if we split it right down here, it seems to be somewhat equal. Each one has six, each one has six, except for this digit. This digit is different. But we still know that this is 6, so if we divide 2017 by 6, <clears throat> then we act, we get then we get 2017 divided by 6, then we get 0, 3, 18, 2, 21, 3, and then 6, remainder 1. So we take this remainder 1, and then we plug it back into here, and we see that the first digit in both of these is 2. So we know that our answer is A, 2. Problem 27. <clears throat> Mike has 125 small cubes. He glued some of them together to form a big cube with nine tunnels leading through the whole cube as shown in the diagrams. How many of the small cubes did he not use? Well, if we look over here, we, we, we see on this diagram that on level 1 and level 5, they both just have 3. So then we have 3 plus 3. And then on the rest of them, we have 11 each. Because either way, what you're really, what you're really doing in 3, it just the only difference is that it shifts up, and this one shifts to the center. And in 4, it shifts one more step up, and this one shifts more... One more step to the left, and we know that this this uh, this this amount of missing cubes amounts to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have three plus three plus eleven plus eleven plus eleven. So this is thirty three, and then this is six. So thirty three plus six equals thirty nine. Therefore, our answer is D, 39. Problem 28. Two runners are training on a 720 meter circular track. They run in opposite directions, each at a constant speed. The first runner takes four minutes to complete a full lap, and the second runner takes five minutes. How many meters does the second runner run before two consecutive meetings of the two runners? So if we look at this, we first have to find the speed of the two runners, and the speed of R1, which is runner 1, equals 720 over 4. And R2, the speed of R2 equals 720 over 5. So then we take these 720 over 4 and 720 over 5, and then we say T equals time, the time that it takes for them to meet at some point. So we do 720 over 4t plus 720 over 5t, and then that should equal 720, because this whole thing is 720. So then we divide by 720, divide by 720, and then we get 1 over 4t plus 1 over 5t equals 1. So then... Then we, we then we have to add these two together. So then, if we add them together, we have five over twenty plus four over twenty, and then that gets us nine over twenty. So then, then we divide both sides. And if you remember, we take we still have this one. So then we have one, 
we have 9 over 20 t equals to 1 and then we multiply it by 20 on both sides then we have 9 t equals 20 and then if we divide by 9 on both sides then we have t equals to 20 over 9. Now since we know t equals 20 over 9, then we have to multiply this to 720 over 5, which is the speed of r2. So 720 over 5 times 20 over 9, we cross these out, this is 4, this is 1, cross these out, this is 1, this is 80, and 80 times 4 equals 320. Therefore, our answer is E, 320. Problem 29. Sarah wants to write a positive integer in each box in the diagram so that each number above the bottom row is the sum of the two no numbers in the boxes immediately underneath. What is the largest number of odd numbers that Sarah can write? Okay, so this is, this is pretty much guess and check. And how we get our answer is by doing this. So we have 1, 2, 1, 1, and then a 2. And then we look at that, we have 3, and then we have 3, 2, 3. This is, so this is 5, this is 5, this is 6, and then this is, this is 11, this is, this is, this is 10, and then we go up from there, and then we get 21. So this actually we don't need. So then, so then we count how many odd integers we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Therefore, we know our answer is D, 10. Problem 30. The diagram shows parallelogram ABC with area S. ABCD with area S. The intersection point of the diagonals of the parallelogram is O. Point M is marked on DC. The intersection point of AM and BD is E, and the intersection point of BM and AC is F. The sum of the areas of the triangles AED and BFC is one third S. What is the area of the quadrilateral EOFM in terms of S? So <clears throat> I marked the one that is equal to one third S with, <clears throat> with this purple color. So we know that this is equal to one third S and if we calculate it, we know that this, basically this is equal to one half, these two combined. So DCO and AOB are equal to one half, which means these are equal to one half. And since we know that this is equal to one half, we can just do one half minus one third. And then you get one sixth. So we know green equals one sixth. Now all we have to do is <coughs> solve for this, this, solve for M E O F. And then we know this is one fourth S because since this is one half and these two are equal, then this must be one fourth S. So then once we know that this is 1 fourth S, and we also know that this is 1 sixth S, we know that this whole thing is um, <clears throat> 1 half S. So if we subtract it all, then <clears throat> we have 1 half S minus 1 fourth S minus 1 sixth S. And then we, we can get our least common multiple in here is 12 so we have 6 over 12 minus 3 over 12 minus minus 2 over 12 so then we have 1 over 12 left which is this therefore we know our answer is d 1 over 12. don't forget to subscribe and like if you have any questions you can email info at agoramagical.org or comment below and we'll reply back. Maybe. <laughs> and if you want to see practice things or anything about us, you can visit our website, which is basically the end of the email, but without the info and the end. So bye!